Hi, today I'm going to talk about creep rupture of thermoplastics. Uh, one way to divide failure behavior of polymers is really to first consider the following three cases. One case is you take a specimen, you just keep loading it at larger and larger loads until it breaks. This is what I call overload failure. And one way to predict that kind of behavior is to use a strain-based failure condition where the critical strain depends on the stress triaxiality. Uh, another way the polymers can fail is if you have a constant load on for a very long time, and that's what's called creep rupture, and that's what I will talk about today. Then, of course, if you have a cyclically applied load and that causes failure, that's fatigue failure. So the focus today is on creep rupture and how you can predict that kind of behavior. Before I get into the predictions, let's talk a little bit about experimental behavior. So I have some data here for polystyrene. Um, this is creep data, so different fixed stress levels in uniaxial tension. And you can see the, the amount of creep strain as a function of time. This is now a logarithmic time scale, as you see. Um, by looking at this figure, the first thing we can observe is that um, this, the creep strain goes up with stress, obviously, but they are not the same shape. This means that this behavior cannot be predicted using linear viscoelasticity, even though the strains are small, because simply the shape changes, and that can't be ob obtained using linear viscoelasticity. Um, if we look at these kinds of curves, we can perform the following experiment. You basically apply a, a given stress, and then you hold that until the specimen fails, and that gives you the failure stress, and then you have the time associated with that. And you can generate graphs like this. This is creep rupture failure graphs. So the stress on the y-axis and time on the logarithmic scale on the x-axis. There are four curves here for four different types of polystyrene. And uh, this is what it is. It's a pretty substantial reduction in the failure stress at uh, instantaneous behavior to a long term. So it goes down by a factor of two or more for this particular type of polystyrene. And uh, we can see also that the shape of these curves are almost linear. And that's a, a recurring theme that most thermoplastics, when they're exposed to constant stress over a long time, the failure stress, the rupture stress, is almost li linear when you plot it on a logarithmic time scale. Um, here's another figure that I, I think is interesting. This is the same type of polystyrene, and it's this creep rupture curve. See how long it can last at given uh, uh, stresses. What's interesting here, though, is these, uh, in this case, the, the material was exposed to different environments. So in air is the black curve here. And then if you put it in different environments, it could be water, it could be uh, battery acid, etc. You see that the strength and the lifetime of the material obviously goes down. And this is the really important point, right? When you're talking about failure of polymers in general, you need to always specify the environment. It could be the temperature, but it could also be other things that the material will be exposed to because that can have a pretty substantial influence on how strong or how long it will last. Here's another material that's very interesting. This is polyether ether ketone peak. It's a high strength thermoplastic material. I'm gonna focus on uh, this specific version of peak here. So it has a yield stress around 100 and then it just deforms like that. And uh, if you plot the stress, uh, uh, the strain as a function of time, so creep data at very small strains, uh, stresses here, you see these are from 10 to 50 megapascal when the yield stress was around 100, we see that there the, the certainly is creep in this material and also that it's a nonlinear viscoelastic response because the shape of the curves is not uh, consistent between different uh, stress levels. We can also, uh, as they did, uh, measure the failure of res response, the creep rupture response, and we see that it goes down substantially uh, with stress here, and uh, that's typically what you see for these materials. What I want to do next is talk about how we can predict this. So to do that, I'm going to use M calibration, our software for calibrating material models to explore the response of a polymer called polycarbonate. So polycarbonate is a very commonly used material. And with, with the M calibration, our software, it actually comes with a predefined set of experimental data for polycarbonate, which I'm using here. So if you add virtual tests and you go down to experimental data, you will see that there is data for polycarbonate here. That's what I inserted. And then I selected a material model from the polyumod material model library I picked a TNV model with these characteristics here. 
And then I calibrated this material model to this data. So here's the experimental data, unicellular tension, unicellular compression, the yield stress is around 60 or so megapascals, it's viscoelastic. And if I just run this once, we can see that uh, they predict the response reasonably well. It's uh, error is about 11%. The point here is not the stress strain prediction. The point is how does this particular material model now predict creep rupture? And how can we explore creep rupture using this software? So what I did was I, I uh, created a load cases for creep. And they are here. So this is experimental data for creep that I created. In fact, it's actually not real data. It's just for a virtual test in some sense. So if I go to this and I... Uh, click edit experimental data, I set the stress the strain, the creep strain to be zero, but I have the time column in here. So if I run this one here, um, we'll see how this looks like. And I like to run this in, a, in the same way as we always run it, and then I'm going to plot it uh, a little bit differently. I don't want to plot stress and strain. I'm going to plot here uh, what we do uh, when we uh, examine uh, creep rupture data. So the x-axis time, I'm going to time on the log scale, and then I'm going to plot strain, and here it is. So here is the creep rupture uh, prediction. So what we can see is that for these different stress levels that I examined here, from 35 up to 55 megapascals, remember yield stress was around 60, we see that the creep strain initially increases almost linearly, and then so that's the second stage creep, and then we have tertiary creep, a very rapid creep at the end. And we see that the the creep strain goes up so fast that we can um, get failure at, at the time point that's very close to the time points that are listed here. In essence, you can actually say that the, you don't need to specify specifically at what strain it fails because these curves become more or less vertical in this way. So it doesn't really matter that much what strain value you pick. You get the same time point at the end. And this is the prediction from this material model that was calibrated to the experimental data. What's cool about this is I can now extract values of a, sing, a specific stress value and then the corresponding failure time. And I can plot that. And here is the plotted results. So this is directly from M calibration. I just plotted it. This is the rupture stress, uh, creep rupture stress as a function of logarithmic time. And with this material model, the T and V model and the PolyU model library, I get the same type of response that we saw experimentally. It's almost a straight line allowing you to predict the creep rupture response for uh, any variety of stress levels that you're interested in. So to summarize, failure on a constant um, load is called creep rupture. And this occurs in all thermoplastic materials. And there are really two ways you can try to predict this and use it if you want to understand if your product is going to fail. One, one, one way is to do experiments on your part at higher loads and then measure experimentally the creep rupture time. And then if you plot a number of those points on this uh, stress versus logarithmic time graph, you can extrapolate to lower values that may be too hard to experimentally test. It's difficult to experimentally test, say, 10 years or more of time. This is not feasible. But doing shorter times and plotting it that way, you can actually often predict the creep rupture behavior at a lower stresses. The other way to do it is what I showed here. You use a suitable viscoplastic material model, you calibrate it to suitable experimental data, and then that material model can also predict creep rupture failure without even having much of a specific creep strain failure value because it goes so fast when it goes. So those are the two ways this works. So creep rupture actually isn't that hard to predict. Um, but you need to do, be very careful about the experimental data that you have. If you have any questions on this, you can ask them below.